Welcome to this video about analyzing a binary variable and in this segment I'm going to discuss the significance test and specifically a one sample binomial test. Probably the best way in my opinion to explain this test is by using an example and I'll be using the example I've been using also for the previous segments, the gender example. So 12 people identified as male and 34 as female which uh, comes down to 26% male and 74% female. Now, in the sample, there is clearly a difference in these percentages, uh, but the big question is, would there also be a difference in percentages of male and female in the population, so in the entire group? So even if there is no difference in the population, we will often still have a difference in the sample. So that we have differences in the sample doesn't mean that there won't be, uh, that there will also be differences in the population and the other way around. So what we actually can ask ourselves is what is actually the chance of having 12 or less males and the 12 are coming here from the 12 we found in our sample or less in a sample, if actually in the population that chance of male is 0.5. Now, this, uh, what is the chance of having 12 or less male in a f uh, sample if in the population is chance of male 0.5 might sound very uh, similar to the definition of significance. And uh, please check my video on significance in itself. Uh, but that definition is the chance of a result is in the sample or more extreme if the assumption about the population is true. Now, this looks extremely similar, but there is a very small catch here. In significance, uh, it's usually about or more extreme, and I'm usually doing two-sided significance, so that means, in this case, uh, more extreme in either direction. So if we look at the 12 or less from our original question here, that's only more extreme to the lower end. So we should also have something to the higher end. Now to look at this, we, uh, we actually had 46 people in the sample. So if it would have been 50-50, we would have expected 23 males. So the 12 is actually giving us a difference of 11 of that 23. So a more extreme to the other end would then be the other way around. So we need the 23 minus 11, that's the original 12 or less. But now we can also include a 23 plus 11, which comes down to 34 or more. And these two together then actually form the or more extreme in either direction. So to make the question slightly more complicated, uh, but more correct is what is the chance of a deviation of 11 or more from the expected number of males in a sample if in the population the chance of male is 0 0.5. So hopefully you're still bearing with me. It's a little bit tricky here, but uh, pause the video, reread this carefully, and um, it should in the end all make sense. So our main question at the moment is what is the chance of a deviation of 11, etc., etc. And if this chance is going to be very low, well, then our assumption about the population will actually probably be wrong. So then the percentage of males will probably not be 0 0.5 and hence also the population of females will, uh, the percentage of females will also not be 0 0.5. If the chance is very high, well then uh, we have no reason to claim that the population, uh, in the population the chance of male will be uh, wrong. So we never actually accept the 0 0.5 um, as being true. We only um, can disregard it if the chance is extremely low. So to calculate this chance, there are a few different ways. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do all of these in this video, that I have separate videos for those. Uh, you could do it manually using this complex looking formula. Note, by the way, that in this formula, I have doubled here the whole thing, and that's only possible if indeed we have uh, an assumption about the population about the 0 0.5. Um, that can actually be done. You fill out the values and you do some tedious calculations and you end up with 0.001641. So that's going to be the chance. Uh, again, 
uh, on my website I have a few different videos on how you can actually calculate this manually I also have their videos on how to do with SPSS they come up with something like this and then you have the 0 0.002 or if you prefer the legacy dialogues in uh, SPSS there's another way and there's also the 0 0.002 if you don't like SPSS but you prefer R, uh, they also have a binomial test and there's the same result. And uh, if you also want to do, can do it by Excel, I have some videos on how to do that. And there I end up with the exact same result. So all of these are actually showing the same result for the uh, chance of a deviation of 11 or more, uh, if in the population the chance of male 0.5. All of these can actually have videos on my website, so go there if you're interested in how to actually obtain this chance uh, using SPSS, R, or Excel, or even manually. So we can reach our final conclusion. Um, this was the question we had. Uh, the answer was 0 0.002 rounded. And, um, well, we already discussed that if this chance is very low and 0 0.002 is considered usually very low, uh, most often the threshold is at 0 0.05, so anything less than 0 0.05 would often be considered low. So then the assumption that in the population the chance of male uh, is 0 0.5 is probably wrong. So that's our conclusion now. And we can rephrase that into the percentage of male is significantly different from the percentage of female. Uh, the test we actually used here was a binomial test, and we could report that something like this. An exact binomial test indicated that the percentage of female, then it's usually uh, nice to actually include the uh, absolute numbers, so 12 and a percentage, 26%, was significantly different from the male percentage, and then simply the p-value, which is the significance in this case, and that's 0 0.002. Um, there are some other tests. Uh, what's often done is, uh, because this is using a binomial test, and a binomial test is often approximated by a so-called uh, z-test, or a normal distribution, um, for proportions in this case. Uh, but using computers these days, uh, an exact binomial test shouldn't be too difficult to do. If you're interested, um, uh, drop a comment below and I'll perhaps also create then how to do the approximation with the normal distribution. Hope this video was helpful. Um, again, if you're interested in how to actually obtain this number uh, using R, uh, Excel or uh, SPSS, uh, check out my website. Uh, it's all for free uh, on there as well. Thank you for watching.